Welcome back to Leanne's Angle. On today's episode, we're gonna be interviewing with Luke Munnell, who is a well-renowned photographer. We're gonna be asking those tough questions and find out the information that has made him successful. He is a very well-versed photographer in the automotive scene, and you can see his work internationally. Now, if you guys haven't already done so, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you can keep up to date for the latest and greatest here on Leanne's Angle. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Leanne's Angle. I have a dear friend of mine, Luke Munnell, on with me. He is a very well-renowned photographer. Now, for the people who don't know, would you explain to them exactly what you do? Yeah, so um, I'm a photographer and, uh, and a copywriter, but mainly photography. And I shoot everything from motorsports to editorial features, commercial uh, advertising jobs, and then um, a lot of product stuff too, product and, and merchandise for e-commerce and websites, you know, things like that. Okay, and how long ago did you get started? You know, it's always been a component of one job I've had or another since probably 2003 or four. Right. But um, I've just, I haven't been independent on my own until 2014. And since then I've, I've been strictly independent, so. Now your business in particular, what would you say your, your bread and butter would be? I still, it's funny, cause every year it's a little different. Last year, strangely enough in the pandemic, I did a lot of motorsports. I did almost the whole IMSA season which was good, good business. I did a lot of uh, product photography at my place here in LA uh, around that. And then this year I thought things would start to clear up a little bit, but they, they didn't quite, you know, the, the business changed a little. Right. So um, I've just been doing a lot more uh, feature style photography for brands and editorial outlets and things like that. Mostly branded these days. Editorial is starting to wane a bit. But I'd say that's my bread and butter right now. That and the product photography is like an always on thing. Right. So those two. And so from the, from the time that you started up until now, how have your numbers grown within like social media as far as, you know, clients that you work with and, and companies that you shoot for? Uh, it's, it's tough. It's, um, you know, when I first started out in 2014 on my own, I, I just had like my editorial clients as my, as my first clients, you know, and, and the work was, was kind of sparse. So I could, I could tell you, say it's only gone up from there. 2019 was my best year. 2019 was a great year. 2020 was not a great year, but it wasn't terrible. Yeah. And then, um, you know, 2021 so far has kind of fallen somewhere in between those two. You know, a lot of industries changed. E-commerce, parts sales have gone through the roof towards the end of 2020. So I got a lot of that kind of work. And now with supply chain shortages and a little bit of inflation going on, they've, it's kind of scaled back a little bit. Right. So it's, it's interesting. I mean, now at least being independent, I got the freedom to pick and choose where I find the work, you know? So if motorsports is slow, I could do product. If that's slow, I could do editorial, you know? So I try to keep it all pretty balanced. Uh, okay. But I mean, it had grown year over year until 2019. That was, that was the best year. And now, you know, it's, there's just some resettling going on, but I think it'll be, it'll be fine. So now I know that a lot of magazines have shut their doors as far as actual hard copy magazines, everything has yeah. gone online. Um, have you noticed a change with um, things being online as opposed to, you know, hard copy production? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting because, um, you know, the internet is really what changed everything. And that happened even back in the late 90s and early 2000s when I was getting started. But, um, you know, prior to that, magazines were the place everybody went for news and information and entertainment and advertising. Strangely enough, if you're building a car, you really do need to see the ads because you need to see who's making the parts for the car that you're building. Right. And magazines offered all that, but now the internet has taken a huge bite out of all those areas. You know, so the magazines, the printed material that's still successful these days delivers in quality and they deliver in access. You know, they'll, they'll bring you stories that you don't see or hear anywhere else and uh, they'll bring it to you in a quality that you'd like to have just floating around your place, you know, your office or your apartment or house. Um, and I've seen a couple of those uh, come and go, you know, speed hunters did a really, really good job, even though that project I think was short lived, yeah. um, Nitto and, and driving line two of my, or one of my clients, they, uh, they do a periodic uh, printed issue that looks fantastic, I think. Um, and those all do really well. They sell through the roof, you know, they can be profitable, but I think the driving line one is more of 
marketing material than, than anything. They're not really making a profit on it, but they could. So I think that was what works with print, but um, everything else is online and not even just on the websites. Now everything's just free on social media. So that's really what's driving the stake in editorial these days. It's just, it's getting harder and harder to, to monetize that and make money with those old website advertising models. It's all going to social media now. And even when, even when brands do successfully make money off of it, it's just a fraction of what it used to be. So then what would you say your successes have been within uh, your career? Well, I think anytime I get out and, and learn something new and, and do better and, and hone my, uh, not just my skills, but like my um, uh, systems, you know, like the processes that, that I you know, have to use to, to get these things done. I feel better about that. I, can t- I consider that a success. Adding new clients is, is always a success, you know, so I, I feel good about that. Um, I mean, I can't really think of any landmark occasions that have been, you know, big career successes. They've just all been small things that kind of add up over the years. Right. But um, I, honestly, I think like any day I can still get up in the morning and, and do what I do for a living. I, I consider that a pretty successful day. You know? For sure. Okay. And then I'm going to ask you a hard question. What about sure. your failures? What, what have some of your failures been and where have you... Um, where have you chosen to uh, change or adjust those failures to get you where you are today? I love that question, actually, because it's, it's actually easier to answer because, well, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I, I think a lot of people do this, but it's easier to take stock of your failures than your successes. You know, I mean, successes is just doing what you, you, you plan on doing, but failures are the things that you really have to overcome in order to get better at what you do. Right. So early on, I mean, before I ever got into business for myself, I was never organized. I was never responsible with money or time or, or any of these things, you know, like I was decently good at what I did, but even then I, I didn't have the discipline to sit down and learn new things and to look introspectively at my work and think what could be better, right. you know, so all those were failures, you know, and when I started out on my own, I realized I needed to correct all that stuff, you know, so, right. so I did that and it took it took a while. I think from 2014 to 17, I was, I was still in that process. And every day I, I get a little better at it if I remember to. But it didn't really click until 2017. And then I, I started realizing, like, you know, I'd gotten into a good place with scheduling and gotten all my financials updated and my books solid and all these things. And then I, I looked back on my life and thought, why didn't I do this when I was in high school or college? Like everybody was telling me to do it, you know? Yeah. I was just too stubborn. I had to see it for myself, you know? <laughs> But that was a number one, number one failure was just not being responsible. You okay. know? And then after I got past that, everything just got easier. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah you, you learning is a huge thing. And to notice, uh, you know, where you've, where you've gone wrong or anything like that and to, to figure out to rectify it, that's huge. So big, yeah. big props for that. Yeah, thank you. So, um, so what suggestions do you have for other people to get started with their own business, whether it be, you know, a travel agency, photography, um, whatever route that they choose, what would you suggest for others to get started? I think having that, that strong, uh, that strong base is just fundamental. You, you need to have that, you know, it's when I went out on my own, I was kind of, it was kind of unexpected, but at the same time, it's something that I wanted to do for a long time. But if anybody wants to get out on bus- in business for themselves, I'd say the first thing you should do is just, just lay all the groundwork, you know, look into the apps and, and the software and things that will help you track your accounting and your expenses and scheduling and alerts and reminders, and, you know, get your emails and websites and social properties all, you know, buttoned down, like get all that stuff there to start. Right. And then from there, I think the next thing is when you have to find clients, it's just you have to look at it from the point of view of not how good you are, but what's worth it to them. You know, you could be really good at whatever it is you want to do, but you can't set your prices and you can't find clients based on that. You have to meet their needs. Right. So, you know, if you want to be a photographer and you're a really good photographer and even if you want to charge, you know, thousands of dollars an hour or, you know, thousands of dollars a shoot. Right. If your clients don't have that budget, they're not going to hire you, you know, so you have to be realistic about that and figure out what their goals are and how you can meet it. I think between those two things, you know, if people get a good base baseline and they understand the, their clients needs, their customers needs, I think they'll be fine. Okay. 
Okay. And then how would you say that the internet has actually helped you? I think it, especially early on, it, it helped a lot. You know, I got into uh, freelancing before I became kind of a staff, a staff or an import tuner and, um, you know, the Mazda agency and these other businesses. When I, when I first started, before I even moved to California, I was kind of a freelancer for editorial back in 2002 or three. Right. And that was kind of when the internet and social were just starting. So I had a Flickr account and a MySpace page. And those two things were, were pivotal in, in like helping me meet people. Cause I was living in Pennsylvania. Right. There wasn't a lot happening out there, you know? So right. because of the internet and social, I could actually meet people and, and exchange my work and, and to kind of find new assignments and things like that. So it had been huge back then. And uh, how about these now? days? Yeah. It's, it's funny these days it's still important. You have to be on the social sites. You have to have a presence because people forget about you. But at the same time, you just, I feel like it's, there's a point where if you're professional in an area that's outside of social media, like I'm not an influencer, I shouldn't be spending too much time and money investing into it. You know, like if I wanted to be an influencer, it's got to be an always on kind of thing, but it's not, I'm not. So I need to kind of scale away a little bit and post less actually so I can work more and not worry about, the rigmarole of keeping up with the Joneses online, right. you know, so there's a balance there. Good information. And <laughs> we really appreciate your time. Um, yeah, of course. For people who want to see your work or for somebody who would like to hire you, where can they get more information? I'm just Luke Monnell all around the web. So my website is lukemonnell.com, two N's, two L's, and all my social handles are just Luke Monnell. So if you notice that I'm not on a specific platform, please don't buy it up because I, I'll try to get there maybe. <laughs> but um, I mean, I'm on all the major ones and um, that's basically it. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's good to see you too. Yeah, you too.